Let's combat and fight back with Meldrax The war of the minds, they want control of the masses And common core, they dumb us down in the classes Without knowledge, we can't gain access Build with the elders, take notes and write classes We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop We buy stocks, then we buy blocks Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya Abibi Fahode, Abibi Fahodie, Abibi Tumi, welcome to another Truth to Power Talk with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. Thank you for joining another powerful discussion. And tonight I have with me another powerful guest, but he is no stranger to the community, Professor James Small. How are you doing tonight, Professor? I'm doing well, sister. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I, I can't complain. I can't complain. Welcome back. Mm. Haven't. Yeah, well, help. Well, haven't seen you in a few weeks, so welcome back on the platform, Professor. Appreciate you, all that you're doing. How how is the family doing out in uh, Lincoln Heights in the Lincoln Heights uh, community? How are they doing? Yeah, they're they're coming because the, the you know they're beginning to move them out of most of them are now moved out of the motels into apartments or rental homes while they are going through the legal process with the company who's responsible for the fire. Mm -hmm. start uh, removing the debris so that the, the building of the homes can begin. That's going to take, of course, some months, but that seemed to be the process that's on the way right now. Okay, so they just clearing out the debris, getting people settled, and they're going to start rebuilding. I know the pastor that you brought on, he was adamant about the people not leaving. He said, no, yeah. we want to stay right here, and we're rebuilding. He said, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And so, so they have started that process. That's what you're saying. Well, you see my black unk. Right? Love it. Love it. Love it. And I see the continent of Africa on your chest. I oh, say. That's, that's our, our family crest. I say. I say. I think of a tree growing up out of it. Ashe, Ashe, Professor. Family, take a moment out to thumb up this video. Thumb up this video. Also, family, share the video. Sharing is caring. Let's get the numbers up. Also, family, if you're watching this broadcast on another platform, be sure to head on over to YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so that whenever I go live, you will be notified. Also, family, if you have missed any other Truth to Power talks, make sure that you go into the archives and watch. I created a Truth to Power talk playlist on my platform. I brought on Professor James Small a number of times, Dr. Kaba Kamene, uh, uh, Baba Anthony T. Browder, Dr. Malefe Asante, Dr. Wade Nobles, Dr. Darity. So a lot of people have been on this platform. So take time out, family, and go through the playlist and check out those powerful discussions. And then lastly, family, join me back here each and every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Read Book Club. This week, we are discussing chapter six, White Flight of the Color of Law. And so even if you don't have the book or haven't read the chapter, family, still tune in because you will learn something. But tonight, uh, Professor James Small and I are going to be talking about the real history of the Dahomey Kingdom and the female warriors. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, Dr. Ma'at, what prompted this discussion? The woman king. A lot of people went out. They saw the woman king. And then people decided they want to boycott the woman king. And we've heard it all. Oh, it's historically inaccurate. We shouldn't watch it. Then you got the brothers saying, you know, how can a woman be king? Then you had people saying that the female warriors were lesbians and all sort of stuff. So you were saying they were trying to push a lesbian agenda. And so, Professor James Small, there were a lot of things circulating and so I wanted to bring you on to clear up some things. And so mm -hmm. I know you saw the film and you spoke about it on your platform, the Hoppy film. But I wanted to talk to you. What were your thoughts about the Woman King when you watched it? The historical inaccuracies, women being kings. What were your thoughts, Professor? First of all, it's not a historical document. It's not a documentary. It's not, it's not, it has it, it refers to history like everything. Nobody asked if Wonder Woman was real or Supergirl was real. Come on. Superman was real. So we had to stop the crap. We still caught up in the self-hate thing and coming out of ignorance. How many of those people who are commenting on that homie ever even heard the word, let alone read the history? I bet if it's 1% or 1% or 1% or 1%, we'd be very lucky. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So you don't know African history. You don't know African culture because you don't really give a damn about it until something like this comes up. And then you want to pretend that you are African enough to do an analysis of a movie that make reference to a situation in African culture. And you can come up with a conclusion when you don't know how to spell the homie. That's being mean, but that's being real. Um, the homie was a very small kingdom in West Africa. Um, uh, that's, I'm gonna have to let him go. Let me turn my phone off. Uh, the homie was a very, so people know that wasn't exactly rude. I'm actually still supposed to be at work shooting a movie. And that was one of the executive producers trying to reach me, but I'm opting to be with Dr. Mahat. We'll argue that tomorrow. Um, so the homie is a very small, small kingdom. It's today, people say it's called Benin. No, Benin of today incorporates the small kingdom of the homie of yesterday. And this small kingdom in West Africa was now occupies a part of what is now less than one fourth of what is now Benin. And um, there's an extraordinary story of this kingdom that was supposedly founded by three brothers, um, as much as the oral history can tell us. And the, it was a vassal state of a larger kingdom called Oyo, which is a part of the Yoruba kingdom. The people of Dahomey themselves was also Yoruba people. And the original settlements in that area was founded by elements of the original Yoruba um, royal family out of Ile Ife. So as we do anytime uh, a family find a dynasty or kingdom, they spread out. So they spread out from Ile Ife to multiple directions, Oyo being one. But Oyo is a state that has come in contact Let's back up a little bit. Okay. Slavery in Africa don't start in 1492. First, let's get that straight, right? Um, what the, the kind of genocidal slavery that we call chattel slavery is founded by Muslim Arabs and Turks and Kurds and Serbian Eastern Europeans, so you call Arabs, but they're not. The Arabs lost the Islamic system in the eighth century and have never gained control until after the First World War when the British put them in charge of Saudi Arabia and, and um, uh, Jordan, okay? So all of that history that you praise in the being Arab history, it's not Arab history. Mm. The Mamluk Turks and the Saljak Turks and the Ottoman Turk took that system from them as early as the end of the eighth century. And even before the 8th century, they had lost the system pretty much to a group of uh, non-Arabs called the Abbas. These are Greeks and Roman descendants, okay? These people invaded Africa uh, right after the death of Prophet Muhammad and started the slave trade in Egypt and then across North Africa. That whole story of the Moors is about collaboration with enslavers and slavery of North African black folks. That's another story. But if you want to understand African history, you're going to have to go back and look at this piece. So by the time we get to the 16th century or 17th century, when we're dealing with a small kingdom called Dahomey, slavery had been going on in Africa for almost 1500 years, run primarily by Muslims. And, and these Muslims were of the Kurdish heritage the Eastern European Serbian heritage um, and, and the Turkish heritage. And the ones you're calling Arabs, these are Greek and Roman children who invaded Africa earlier and bastardized our women through rape and plunder. And so these are the people who for 1500 years put into place the slave system that the white Christian would tap into in for, after 1492. Let's get that foundation down there. So we stop playing with each other. Africans, like any society, have what you call a servitude system. You're either gonna have prisons to throw people in if they do wrong, or you're gonna have some kind of system where it's peonage, where they're gonna pay that off. Well, in the African system of servitude, you did not lose your name. You did not lose your family. You did not lose your cultural tradition. 
you could become a part of the very family you were in servitude to, and you can even become the king or the queen of that community. That's not chattel slavery. And that's not slavery in the Western sense of slavery. That's the African servitude slavery that you would have to pay off a debt or you have to pay for a crime or whatever you did because we didn't have prisons. So let's get that part straight. The Africans who got involved in what became chattel slavery after the contact with the Portuguese, none of them had ever been to America. None of them had ever been to Brazil. None of them had ever been to the Caribbean. They knew nothing about what chattel slavery was or how it worked. They were caught up in, in, the, in what they understood as a servitude system when they sold their prisoners of war. But then the, you had some black folks who were greedy, just like we got black folks selling dope to us right now and then all our families. We got black folks killing hundreds of other blacks on the streets every day in America, you know, because they're ignorant, backwards, desperate, and ruthless. You had some of them back then. They represent, in the studies that have been done, less than 4% of a 100% bridge of Africans was involved in any kind of slave trade. 90% of the slave trade was carried on by the Christians and the Muslims who are criticizing this movie. So let's get history straight and let's get facts straight. And yes, there were black folks who committed crime against black folks back in the day. There were black folks who are committing crime against black folks today as we are speaking right now, okay? We've got blacks who are collaborators with the Democratic Party and collaborators with the Republican Party and collaborators with the mafias and collaborators with, with the other mechanism of ethnic whites who are controlling the business and economics in the black community and the Arabs and the Asian and the other doing this in Baltimore right now. So come so, on, come so. on, that's yeah, right. You know, Malcolm, I just left a show where we talked about Malcolm. Malcolm says, know the truth and the truth should set your mind free. Come on, Bob. Yes, I'm the first one to say, yeah, there was black folks in Africa who got caught up in what we know as a transatlantic slave trade, but didn't have a clue of what chattel slavery was about, didn't know what they were caught up in. Some of them were caught up in it for plain greed. And I would say that's the smallest percentage. The others were caught up in it because they, were, they represent the coastal people who had been conquered and captured by the Europeans with their guns and was forced to be a part of the European raiding and enslaving machinery. So study history and see who these people are, but then study the history of the hundreds of thousands of African men and women who picked up arms against slavery Come on, on. The of Africa and fought against these collaborators and traitors and fought against the European. Otherwise, this thing we know as chattel slavery genocide would have been worse than what it was, you see? And so we come back to Dahomey, a kingdom most of Africa is, is in terms of how you rise to power in a kingdom is what we call matrifocal, meaning the women represents the power and the man represents the authority. And you can go today in most African kingdom that follows the African, not matriarchy, the Africans didn't have matriarchy where women control, they had matrifocal because it's mama's baby, daddy's maybe. And the only way you're gonna know what that bloodline is is through mama, because you can't be sure which daddy put the blood there. So we were smart like then, back then, without being disrespectful. Just right, absolutely, the, absolutely. Just telling the truth. And I'll give an example of one glaring kingdom of today that still does this along with many others. But in, in the development in Dahomey, especially at the time of these wars going on with the kingdom of Oyo, which is a much bigger kingdom, which is involved with the Muslim, the Islamic kingdom, who have raid, raided them for centuries now, okay? And you can, there's a uh, eight volume book of history on, on African history put out by UNESCO, written mostly by black scholars from all over Africa. And they'll tell you the story. Look at 2000 Seasons and read that book. It'll tell you the story. So don't be beaten up on my beautiful sister, Sister Viola, because she's trying to tell you a fantasy that relates to a historical experience. Dahomey, like some other kingdoms, had women, here's how their political structure, when the, that 
kingdom was founded, they focus on the patriarchal system where the man is king. But he didn't become king on his own, right? And men alone didn't make him king. In the system in Dahomey, for every man who was in a leadership element in the military, he had a female counterpart in the court. That, that was the checks and balance. That's my art. That is my art. Okay. And Dahomey, what the king did under the, the, the last three founding king that is involved in this period we're calling you the, the enslaved, where they're involved with the Portuguese in this enslavement process, they had women as the guards. They were the king's guards. They were the elite. They would be the Green Beret or the Navy SEAL of that day. Well, that body of female warriors expanded to become a part of the army. They never had an all-female army. They had female elite troops as a part of their army. And that's what the story is about. And those women were not lesbians. During that period of time that they served, which was about from, I think, like 16 years old to 30, you could not get married and you could not have children. But after that service period, you could get married. Many of them became a part of the system of polygamy because a lot of men were afraid of a tough woman, just like a lot of men are cowards today and scared of a tough, strong woman. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got a tough woman downstairs. We've been together 51 years. I don't give her no grief because she's she just as strong as me and just as tough as me. And thank God, you know? And so, and when I say tough, I'm not talking about it in no limited way. Okay. Um, she's tough intellectually, she's tough physically, she's tough spiritually, she on it. Right. That's why we've been hanging for 51 years. But coming back to the the history, and you know you can only in, in a short period of time, and you can only do so much history, but I'm saying enough so people go do the research. Right, right. I'm yeah. with you, Professor. I'm research. with you. Right. And these women troops, which started out as being the female guards of the kings and they expand in their training and most of their trainers were men who were training them men and women trained them and they showed this even in the movies you know men were fighting with them on the battlefield they show this in the movie this is not an anti-man movie this is not about lesbians black women were leaders long before the homie and then we're going to come to the question of the king Go back to Kemet. Everybody's saying Kemet, 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 and I'm a Kemet, and blah, 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 blah. Hatshepsut was not a boy. Hatshepsut was not a man. And Hatshepsut was the king, the pharaoh of Egypt. And Hatshepsut was not the first pharaoh, female pharaoh of Egypt, nor the second, third, or fourth. All through Egyptian history, there are female pharaohs even before Hatshepsut. All right? The queen and Zenga of the Congo was not a queen. Europeans call him a queen. She was the king of Angola and parts of Congo. Mm. When her brother died, she became the king. My goddaughter, Diambi, right today, is the king of all of Congo. She is the queen of the Luba people in the Southeast, her people. But she is the king of Congo, voted in as king by the queen mother and the kings of all of the ethnic group of Congo today. Nigeria at this moment have five female kings that we know about. So study history. We never had an issue. When Yah Asantiwa took on the British, she wasn't any longer the queen mother. She became the king because Santa Henny had been captured and the stool was vacant. Mm. And when she took that spiritual role, because the stool, the throne in Africa, is not a political place. When you sit on the throne in Africa and any kingdom, especially in our ancient days, you sit on the seat of the ancestors as the ancestor. Let me say that again. Say you that sit again, Bobby. On the seat of the ancestors as the ancestor. Right. And so you're not you no more. If you hanging out with me and we sit now having a beer, 
Me and the I have kings who I hang out with, we're partners. Mm -hmm. When they take on that responsibility, walk into that palace, walk into that temple, put on those sandals, put on that robe, put on that crown, sit on that stool or in that throne, they're no longer my friend. They're no longer the PhD professor. They're no longer the lawyer. They are the ancestors. Mm. And they become the conduit in which the ancestors is represented and communicate with his people or her people. And king, as the sister just put up, is not a masculine word. It is not. And that's why you can go back as far as I said, go to ancient Kemet, go to ancient Kush. When the Romans tried to invade Kush, there was not a man on the throne of Kush fighting the Romans. They were women kings that ran the kingdom of Kush. So just study the history. I'm not blaming us for not knowing the history. This white man had made sure we don't know our history. So when we see our story told, even in a fictitious way, this is fiction, this story that's being told, but the fiction has some facets and reference to history that was actual. And many of the women who, when they left service at age 30, even I'm not sure whether it's 25 or 30, they got married. Many in polygamous families, but African polygamy wasn't about having women for sex. Polygamy was about having families. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. And so we need to take some African look at things. Um, women have been soldiers in our history all throughout time. When the, the Turkish and the other Muslims invaded North Africa, the woman who led the Moabites against them, you know, you had the Moabites, you had the Moabites, you had the, those who got converted to Islam and joined the Arabs, but there were some black folks in the Atlas Mountain that say, we ain't becoming Muslims. And for the first 15 years of their resistance, they were led by a woman king. His name was Amma. Professor, do you do you think that people, this English language, because we speak the English language, that it that it trips language people up? And the English culture, the Thank culture you. determines how we view things. It determines the value we put on things. My mama is my God. I came from between her legs, out of her womb. You walk into any Masonic temple, you see two pillows. Those are representative of the pillars of the woman's legs. And if you go back through those pillows, you're going back into the womb of the woman to learn the wisdom of the universe. You got to learn your culture, Black people. Mm. You got to understand your culture. It ain't their culture. We are ruled by their culture, not for any reason of our own, okay? Mm -hmm. We are ruled by their culture because of the savagery of them having imprisoned us all of these years. So stop fighting yourself. Even as Viola and them had got it wrong, the attempt to try and tell a fantastic story that metaphorically tell your story, it is a glorious attempt. We watch, we go to movies all the time and watch other people be heroes and heroines and have not, no issue with it. Not at all, not one. You don't say is that historically accurate? What was, what was, was, was the, what's that thing called? Spartacus accurate? Um, Spartacus led a big slave rebellion. Um, was this, no, we don't do that. And yes, you should criticize anybody telling your story if you see that they've told it in a wrong way, in a harmful way to your people. But make sure that that's what you're seeing before you stop this criticism. Absolutely. Make sure that that's what you know and what you understand. And let this be a good reason to go study history. So nobody has to tell you a story and you have to rush out the dark fighting like a bunch of crazy people and don't know why you're fighting because you don't know the story yourself. Baba, look, there's a brother in... Oh, so go ahead, go ahead, finish. Go ahead, Baba. Let me just go one level because there's something else going to come up. And I told my sister, every time I talk, I'll mention the day days. D-E-D-E. Mm -hmm. -E. Because, see, these women are still serving in the army even up when the French was there. And these women took on the French. And in the last battle of the day days, the French killed almost 600 of them in one day. 
Do you know that story? Mm, Do you know no. that genocide against your woman by these French male gun-toting creeps? And guess what they did? They took many of them and sold them into slavery. Guess where? Into Haiti. Oh, wow. But guess what happened? They got to be old ladies. They couldn't have sex no more. They couldn't be raped anymore. They couldn't be worked in the fields anymore. So the Catholic Church, in partnership with the French in their genocide of slavery, made them lay people in the church that they called day days to try and convert the young black women and, and young black men not to be hostile against the French kingdom. And guess what they did? Those the homie soldiers who are now all broken down ladies mm. taught these young girls and especially and young men, but especially the young girls who are the day days, right? To become the warriors that met on that island that night in Haiti and triggered the Haitian revolution. And one of them was married to Toussaint, one was married to Dessaline, one was married to Christophe and others. And a multiple of them became generals and colonels in the revolutionary army of the revolutionaries of Haiti under mm. Dessaline, the same group of women. Mm, the day days. Their story needed to be told. Mm -hmm is trying to write that story. And I'm trying to help her find somebody who would tell that story. Oh, you think you killed us in the home because you slaughtered us in the field with your French weaponry and you sent the rest of the slavery into Haiti, you know? You know the young lady that plays the sister of the Black Panther? And yes, Black yes, Black yes. She yes. did a documentary on these women and she got a chance to interview the last living one of these women warriors. So we need to do some research, you know? Absolutely. Now, I'll, I'll, African don't tolerate um, homosexuality. That was not a part of our culture. Mm -hmm. They put mm -hmm. that in there. Viola and them don't own the system. We're just like I'm fighting in the Godfather to get things as black as we could get it. But Baba, they, I didn't see anything. I didn't see any depiction of homosexuality in the film. This I didn't the see of one brother who was one of the brothers. Oh, the that kids. guy, that guy. Yeah. He was a yeah. eunuch, right? Wasn't he, he was a, a eunuch? eunuch. Okay. There was a eunuch comes from the, the Arabs and the Turks would cut our testicles out so that we could guard the women that they were raping and would not have sex with them another part of their genocide that they tried to make seem normal by calling it eunuch. No, eunuch is genocide. You cut out a man's testicles, you stop his ability to create life. That's genocide. That is genocide. You know? So we need to understand how things, what things should be meant to us, you know, and, and, and have a better understanding. I'm telling all of my children, take my grandchildren to see this movie. Mm -hmm. It's a bit violent, but that's okay. We live in violence when we live in America. And the kids should see that women do not have to be some weak, wimpy, submissive, somebody wearing hoop dresses, you know, like, and, and sitting around drinking mint julep. That's not what our women was doing. Our women was in the field, digging up stumps bringing down trees, growing plants, raising families, being raped and still learning how to love the child that came from her rape womb and mm. still raised them to be an African man and still could love her African man and the African man could still love her, his African woman, knowing that she had been raped by the, both the enslaver, both of them. We had to create an African humanity in our brain that I don't think most of us even understand. Mm. So you need to back up and learn history. History will erase the mystery. Mm -hmm. And like I said, some of our people did wrong back then. Some of our people was into the enslaved thing for greed alone. Most of them, though, if you study the history of how the coastline was conquered, was fighting under duress against their own people because they were conquered by a gun toting, cannon toting other people. And if you look and do the, the research of Dr. Leonard Jeffries, the rum they were bringing to Africa, you'll see that the rum they were selling to African people right what was tainted with um what's the drug um that you get heroin from um, 
the drug, the drug, the drug, the yeah, drug. The Dope, you're not talking. Oh, opium, opioid. Opium. Right. Okay. All right. right. The rum that was being taken to Africa. This is in the law because see, they got to keep a record of all the economic shit they do, right? Mm -hmm. And the rum they were bringing to us had opium in it. So we was hooked like a crook in a battleship. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't haven't figured it out till this day. But study history. It will erase the devil's mystery. Mm. And you'll be able to see the black magic. Yes, this movie is not perfect, but it is fantastic. Yes, this movie, if you look at it, it tells a lot of story. The brother Malik, who comes from Brazil, mm -hmm. because her mother was captured. His mother was captured in Dahomey, raped by some white man. He had this white father, but his African mother said, go back home and find yourself. And so in the movie, he comes back to Dahomey and he finds himself, even though he said he has found this beautiful warrior princess, you see that he finds himself because there was, a, when there was an opportunity to help free the enslaved Africans or go along with the enslavers, he made the choice to help free the enslaved Africans, mm -hmm. even though it might have cost us. There's a lot of beautiful scenarios there that we can learn from about how we need to develop character. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, Baba, and, what, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. And so there may be things about the movie that we want to criticize, but in the end, it's not a historical document and the hand, and it's not a documentary. It is a fictitious story about some real people that once lived in Africa that had committed crimes against themselves, some under duress and some out of greed, but had then the stories about how they destroy that system and say, let's get out of the system of committing crime. And they really did. They did move away from being involved in capturing other people and bringing them into slavery and began to use agriculture as a mean and mining as their primary commodity to sell to the Europeans. Now you can say, well, they worked, the people they captured, they worked in the field. You could find anything wrong with it. But you tell me how you would tell that story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How you mm -hmm. tell the story of Ghana. How would you tell the story of Hatshepsut? Because you don't understand the African system. The woman is the power. The man is not the power in African kingdom. The man is not the power in the universal explanation given to me by my ancestors. The man is the authority, the woman is the power. Look back to your earliest symbol of God, okay? There isn't a woman child sitting on the lap of a male. There's a male child sitting on the lap of a woman and her lap is the throne of the universe of heaven itself. So let's understand the symbols. I'm talking about a set and Heru. Before you run around talking about how you wanna be Heru, remember Heru came from the womb of a set. And she sits on the throne of her lap. Look on her head. You'll see the throne is on her head telling you that she is the throne of the earth. She is the throne of the universe. She's symbolic of all African women. I ain't running for my woman. Y'all be all the kings y'all need to be and all the queens y'all need to be. And I'm going to still be out here rapping to you. Yo, baby, what's up? You know, sister, you know, you, you walking with the inspiration and aspiration. I say. Mm -hmm. I just want to have a conversation about your inspiration and your aspiration. I you say, can, Baba. You know, your mother, the universe created you first and you created me through your vagina because I ain't creating, you can be Adam all you want, ain't nothing coming out of your poop hole but your poop. Okay. <laughs> so get it straight and stop acting like white folks who got to imprison their women and demean their women and slaughter and mutilate their women to exert themselves as male in some dominance they really don't have. Mm. So let's come back to the movie. It's a wonderful movie. And those young people, and led by Sister Viola as the senior actors in that piece, do an extraordinary job mm. at telling stories and metaphors that make sense. That makes sense. If I wanted African women or warriors to do anything, I wanted them to do just what they did in that movie. And it may inspire us to go look at other civilizations in Africa, other kingdoms in Africa, and see that we had 
women warriors in other places fighting beside their men every day. Go to Ghana. Go to the northern region. Go to Wa, Paga, Bogotanga. You know, and you will see the houses that we built to thwart the Arab enslavers, right? They had no windows, just slots for us to shoot our bow and arrows. Our windows was on the roof and the eight foot to 10 foot courtyard around our homes had a door that was only two foot high. You had to get down and crawl in so the enemy couldn't just kick the door in. Mm. They had to stick their head in and if they did, they would lose it. See what we did to fight against slavery. See the army of Amanatu in Northern Nigeria when she takes on the Ottoman and writes a letter to the Sultan of in Egypt and says, we are both Muslims. Why are you raiding my people and taking my women into slavery? This is a woman leader of the people we now call the houses. She was the house of king, yes, before Dahomey. So study history. It will erase the white man and the Arab and the Jewish and the Greeks and the other ones. Mystery. And we oh, absolutely. Can learn black magic. No, absolutely. So, Baba, let me ask you a question. I know in the film they talk about King Gizo or Ginzo Gizo. And so, what were what did they? Is the name of a real king. Okay, because I was about to say he was a real king. Not, that mm -hmm. the, there was a real king by that name, but this was a fictitious portrayal. Of, that of him, got you, got okay. you. Because they did use, okay, yeah. okay. They did use okay. the name of the real king. And I didn't find nothing wrong with that. All of us have taken names. I remember when I thought I was a Muslim, I became, I didn't just become, you know, a mean Shahid. I went all the way to Mecca and became a Haji. El Haj Amin Shahid. I wear that title and nobody can take it away from me. But I realized that was an African culture. They had imposed themselves of African culture and imprinted themselves on our culture, but Islam is not African culture. And we all wear in all these names that are not African names, but because we gave up the European name, we think we got African names, but we really got another body of people who culturally genocided us, politically genocided us, just educationally genocided us, and physically genocided us, even before we met the Christian European. Right. So that's why history will erase the mystery. And then you can come back and be like me, Nana Kofi Mpansa II, mm. or Obenjoko Adebayo, or Niahito Okropong. Those are my African names from African ancestors. I say. I can trace my Maya Kanjia back to Sierra Leone and the Mendi. You know, I can trace my male chromosomes back to the Yoruba and the Akan. And the Yoruba and Akan are cultural differences because genetically the Yoruba and the Akan is the same people. But study will let us know these things and we don't get caught up in their little thing. Because those borders and those countries' names that we know today didn't exist back then, okay? They all came after the Berlin Conference. We were one Africa at one point. He was, oh, you got all these different languages and all these different cultures. No, we got one culture, the culture that said the universe is God. Come on. And we're a part of that divine essence that says the cosmology and the ecology and us are in a three-way partnership, mother, father, and child. That's Shay. That somebody misunderstood and anthropomorphized as white homo, white human beings. I almost call them something else. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway. I don't blame brothers and sisters for not knowing the history. People like me that know a little bit, it's my obligation to give you what I know. And then you got to go beyond me because even all of I say may not be as steady as it should be, but I'm saying more than most people know. So now I'll go further than I am, become a greater teacher than I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm a greater historian than I am and teach the children that we got this extraordinary history and we need to use the medium of the movie and television and everything we can to tell our story in any way we can, in metaphor and allegory and fiction and in reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I thought it was a great, 
um, depiction of uh, African culture. When I when I sat and watched it, Bob, I was like, "This is this is excellent." I, I love where they did the blood oath to Ogun. So yeah. now we, we're they, looking they at Ifa. A lot of the culture. Yeah. If you understood Absolutely. the culture, for instance, remember <laughs> the young lady gave the statue of Ogun. Yes. To the young brother Malik, who had come back from Brazil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, in the end, he became a warrior like Ogun. But that's not the essence of Ogun. Ogun is symbolic of transformation of both the human spirit, personality, and character. Mm -hmm. And what the young man went through once he met this young lady and was given that statue is a transformation process. So if you know the cause, you go, damn. That's Baba Awa. That's what Ogun is. Ogun mm. is transformation. Mm. Right? So somebody just mentioned, yeah, Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben was my teacher. I lived in their houses. I lived in their home. I painted their ceilings. I put up their plaster and sheet like in the bathroom and it fell. I ate at their table. They were my teachers and still are my teachers. I used to dream to be a teacher like Dr. Clark. I'm mm. still dreaming. I'm not there. You know what I'm saying? Look, I dream, to, I dream to be a teacher like you. I dream to be a teacher like you, Baba, because you're like a walk-in library. <laughs> like, what, literally. What Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben both taught me is that you have to love even the most ignorant of us because you are not obligated to teach those who know. You're obligated to teach those who don't know. Mm. So those who have some information and just sitting in a circle with themselves, you are a problem. My job is to take the little bit I know and bring it to the masses who don't know so that they could take that little bit that I know and raise themselves to a higher level of knowing so that they could teach their children and grandchildren. Because it is the knowledge of self, as Elijah Muhammad told us, another one of the brothers we poo-poo in history because of the conflict between them and Malcolm. God, our heart still aches over that conflict, but we have to let that conflict go. Mm. We have to let that conflict go because the wisdom that Elijah Muhammad gave to Malcolm and Malcolm gave to us that we said we love Malcolm for, then you can't love the son and forsake the father. Come on, come on, Baba. Mm. And so this is what storytelling is about. This is what metaphor is about, is to teach you concepts, ideas, and principles that was inherent in the culture of our ancestors that we need to learn today. And the movie is one of the tools. It's just a tool, but we need to use the tool. We can't keep leaving it to the enemy to tell our story and use the tool to show our story. We have to fight for every moment that we can to. Oh. Oh, I don't know, Bob. I don't listen. I'm just clicking on comments. And, oh, no, good. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like yeah, I just click on comments. Uh -huh. Don't yeah. Some of these people are, you know, like, yeah. well, some of them are trolls. Study I always the say. History. Study the history. Yeah. Read, read the African scholars. Read the Caribbean scholars. Read the African-American scholars. Read the ancient scholars. Read the Husea. Um, Read the, the Book of the Coming Forth by Day. Read the Pyramid Text. Read the Coffin Text. I've read all of them read these literature of of the book of the dead not the one out of Kemet. there's a book of the dead out of ethiopia read the scripts learn the lesson you know ask yourself why the king of congo would invite me to be sitting on the stage beside her when she's being ordinated of course the american government blocked me five years ago and mm. had to resend my invitation and visa, and I couldn't go. But they set an empty chair and put my gift in it. You've seen me wear my gift, my leopard hat, and my leopard jaw that was sent anyway. We have to believe that Africa is heaven. Mm. It was heaven. It is heaven. And if you think it's not heaven, you just contemplate the hell that you live in. Mm and the possibilities that can come from learning your history and helping to restore the integrity of African culture back to our minds, the integrity of African culture. We are now working, Dr. Wade Nobles call it, European mimetic infection 
meaning that the European culture and value is an infection in the African mind. It Even is. when we're calling ourselves Black nationalists and Pan-Africanists, we haven't cleansed our mind of the European cultural mimetic infection and value system because we don't realize the difference between theirs and ours. Baba, he talks about that. Is that in the book, The Island of Memes, or that's something the else? The Island of Memes. That thing, do you read that book, you'll be walking on water. Wow, okay. I have it. I need to so read Dr. it. Dr. Wade Nobles, The Island of M-E-M-E. -E. Everyone should buy it. Mm. He does an analysis, which would you can make a partner with Urugu, the work done by um, our sister, uh, Nana Marimba Ani. Nana Marimba Ani. But we got to read the book. So we got to read 2000 Seasons. We can't just buy it and hold it. We got to read Stolen Legacy. And we got to have discussions on it, you know. So when we do these things, then when somebody show you a woman as being extraordinary, instead of dancing, you go crazy. I want my woman to be extraordinary. Come on, Baba. My woman is the finest thing in the world. There ain't nothing greater than the African woman. I say. Okay. Don't you gonna beat her up for the mistakes you made? What about the friggin' mistake the black male has made in the last few centuries? Because we all suffer from post-slavery trauma syndrome, trying to fix ourselves. So let's get the knowledge on how to fix ourselves. And the knowledge is in the African culture. It is in the African sacred science system that we call the spiritual system. Oh, thank you, brother, because I couldn't remember the sister's name. You know, I'm 77 years old. So like, <laughs> no, we got it, Bobby. This is the sister. Brother, who brother, didn't and, brother Hurst, brother Hurst on, on, has on, your on, back. On, mm -hmm. on, on, on the, um, the, the warrior queens of and kings of, of, of Dahomey. And you've got to look it up and watch her work. That documentary is extraordinary. And she did that a few years ago, okay? Before mm -hmm. the, 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 the movie was made. And you will see a lot of similarities in there as she's going to Benin and talking through the people of Dahomey. And I've been to Benin multiple times. And that palace that they film in, I've been in that palace multiple times. Wow. You know, there's something spiritual about there when you go there. Yes, we made mistakes. Yet we commit some crimes we shouldn't have committed. But yes, we also did extraordinary things to destroy the crime. We did extraordinary things to better our lives and better our minds. We fought when we had the chance to push the European off the coast. This myth about the British stopping slave trade. What foolish black person believed that? How many ships did they send to cover the entire Atlantic Ocean talking about they stopping the slave trade? Two, three? Mm. And the Americans sent one or two. Stop wanting to love white people so badly that you give them credit for things they couldn't even dream of. Mm. They never intended to stop the trade, slave trade. You know, the serf in Europe had declared a war on the elite European for their freedom so that they can be out of slavery. And once they moved the European worker population from the class of slaves to the class of serfs, then they fought to end the serfdom and began to give themselves salaries and status. But one thing stood in the way of them gaining power was the European using African slaves in Britain and other parts of Europe. And so they had to abolish slave trade in Europe, slavery in Europe to keep from having a revolution from their own serfs and former white slaves. Mm. Well, study history. And the, the wealth that the African enslaved peoples brought into the European kingdom triggered what is called the Industrial Revolution. So free labor became a com competition to the development of the Industrial Revolution using wage slavery of white people to move forward. And so that's why the British made the move they made. They never ended slavery. They said they were ending the slave trade to their competition in the Americas. I don't want to go deeply into that, but mm -hmm. you need to study history so you can embrace the mystery, get an understanding of what's really going on economically, politically, and culturally. And culturally. Economically, politically, and culturally. 
Ashe. And I just want to say to the folks in the chat, I know there are a few people in here, you know, who may disagree with, with yeah, whatever you heard. And that's, and that's, and that's, and that's, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, I just ask that you remain respectful. I mean, that's it. You know, it, it costs nothing uh, just to be yeah, respectful. Well, I can give you family. my phone number. You want to get disrespectful. I'll tell you where I live. <laughs> Come on down, <laughs> you know, and, and we're going to see if you can be so anti that movie and them four black men and women working in there and you're walking beside your genocidal European enemy every day, shaking his hand, smiling and dancing and skinning. Right. And working for him. Don't forget working for him, Professor. They 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 get up in the morning and work for white mm -hmm. folks and, Best you know, and all like that. But like him, talking like and dreaming like him. I dream to have a bald head, nappy head black woman at mm -hmm. my side. Mm -hmm. My baby is losing her hair now. And I know sometimes she looks good, but I rub it at night. So let her know. I don't care if all of your hair falls out. You know, Aww. her little knees are getting sore. That's why I left the movie shooting I was doing today, because she can't walk up them train stairs at 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 um at the subways to come home. So I told Mr. Forrest Whitaker, my brother, you know, I love you. I know this is your last day shooting. I got to go pick up my baby, my sister, the lady who bore me four children, right? Mm -hmm. Who knees hurt now? And whose hip isn't as solid as it used to be. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, boy, them breasts are still strong, my girl. <laughs> oh, she always had the like, night, the tightest breasts, right? But she still got them. At seven years <laughs> Baba old. said she still got them. How old would you say, Baba? She's, She's what? 70 years old now. 70 right? years old, I sure. Yeah. And um, we've been running together since she was 17, you know? And so the point I'm making, yeah, we made some mistakes in history. We did some wrong. We're making mistakes today. Yes. We're making mistakes in not just the drug, that's an extreme. Not even the killing, that's an extreme. But we're making a mistake because we're not investing our money in black communities. We're making a mistake because we're not teaching our children black history in the home. We're right. making a mistake because we're still looking at African spirituality as evil. How can you look at the soul of your ancestors as evil? You're the sum total of all the ancestors you've ever had. You are nothing but what used to be that is now. If you understood your culture, let me tell you what I mean by that. But sometimes you got to drop stuff on people, right? All them dead people in your family, that's you yesterday. Come on. Okay? Come on. That's African culture. If you understand that, you have a better understanding of the movie and the dialogues, and so much beautiful dialogue is put in there trying to explain certain problems that are being solved with the essay, fictitious or not, in the life of a probable fictitious African people. That's how you solve problems. We created theater. Go back to ancient Sudan, ancient Egypt. We created a drama before there was a Greek. Mm. And we use drama as a way, a tool of teaching concepts, ideas, principles, ethics, and morals, okay? So our enemy have taken over the film industry in America and have used it to kill our minds. We need to get in and take over the film industry from them, at least take over an aspect of it for us, both here and in Africa and the Caribbean, and tell our stories to our minds for ourselves because each one of us is the sum total of every ancestor that ever lived. And your ancestor, them dead people, that was you yesterday. Because when your parents gave birth to you, they gave birth to themselves, because that's the only thing they can give birth to. When your grandparents gave birth to your parents, they gave birth to themselves. That's the only thing they can give birth to. So when you were given birth to by your parents, you were also given birth to by your grandparents, your great parents, your great parents, your great parents. You're the sum total of all of them. That's Absolutely. who you are. Our, that's African culture. That's the universe. That's the theory of one the white man is trying to get to and can't find. That's the totality of everything. Okay. And you're Absolutely. part of that totality of everything. That's African culture. That's what the film is trying to show. And if you look well, look at the shrines. If you know enough about your culture to recognize what an altar and a shrine is, and don't tell me nothing about a shrine, because every time you walk in the Catholic church, all you see is a shrine. A bunch of dead people all up on the wall with candles all over the place. And you can stomach that. 
but you can't put one little white candle on an altar with your dead people and your ancestors in your house. Stop right. it. Y'all just playing. And you don't want to really play with me because I am truly a priest. And I love being a priest. And I've been a priest for over 50 years. And I'm still learning. I still don't know nothing. I serve, and some who hear me will know, I served and studied at the Shrine of Tigare with Nana Kamanti Deni Zulu. I work in the Shrine room sometimes 48 hours without us coming out. Mm. Okay. I am Obanjoko Adebayo. You know, I'm a priest of Oya. Oya in the Yoruba is the guardian of the gateway to the cemetery. That is symbolic of being the guardian of the wisdom of the ancestors. Because what's in the cemetery? Your ancestors. What mm. is in the mind of those ancestors is your wisdom. Your wisdom. Okay. We have a beautiful cultural system and a beautiful safer science system and a beautiful spiritual system, but we need to learn it and study it. We criticize it without even looking at it. It's so crazy. The white man got us crazy as the bed bug. Yes, he does. He's crazy as the bed bug. Yes, I'm he saying, does. You don't criticize any movie made, any piece, but do it with dignity and integrity towards the African workers who tried their best to bring a message to you. Do it with respect and dignity for history and culture that you don't study by studying it. So you can give the best advice possible to the next group of people that want to make a document about your history and your ancestry and be a help in expanding the body knowledge so that we can one day truly be free. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what this is about. So Sister Viola, girl, you know I love you and everything that you've done. And I really love you in this one. And your husband, I know he don't mind at all because you are working for your people. And if you ever heard that woman's interviews. Oh, yes, Baba, she is sharp. Oh, Baba, she's sharp. About who she is. She is clear about her motive towards her people. She reminds me of Cecily Tyson. And in one of her interviews, she said when she came into this industry, she wanted to be Cecily Tyson. And -hmm. she's the highest goddess in the film industry that we have, that's Cecily Tyson. So um, let's learn from it and whatever shortcomings we have, let's criticize the shortcomings, but let's learn from it. And let's praise our young people who starred and worked hard. Those people had to work hard. They had to go to martial arts. They had to practice swordsmanship. They had to run every day on that treadmill. They had to lift weights to be able to bring this message to you with as much authenticity as possible about what a soldier would really do. And I served in the military, both for the European Americans and for the African Black Liberation Army. And I'm not ashamed of either one because I learned the military craft. Mm -hmm. I wear a martial arts master's jacket because I studied and fought and learned from some of the great martial artists in this country because I wanted to be your soldier. Mm. I could have gone out there and take my little degree and made money and, and, move into the white suburb. I live in a suburb, but in an old black community that had been here since the 1600s. All right, Papa. So, you know, and then, you know, I love old black community. The one that burned down in California was there since the 19th century, the turn of the 20th century. That's what she told me. You said 902 or 904, something like that when mm-hmm. they established it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So let's learn to look at each other, criticize each other, Mouse, the tongue in this little red book that we used to study in the 60s is very good. He says, criticize both through self criticism and external criticism, but don't do external criticism without first doing self criticism. Come on, come on. And then you can give good advice. And then you can show mistakes made, but be, how do you say, um, honest enough to see that. The mistakes may not have been deliberate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For those who are saying, don't watch the movie, don't do this. You know, let's stop doing that. I can be an African-American without being anti-Jamaican-American or anti-Nigerian 
or anti-Pan-Africanism or anti-foundational Black Americans. You can label yourself anything you want to be if the label is describing who you want to be described as, but do you have to then hate the rest of yourself? That sounds like the white man is still in charge of your minds. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, those who that message is meant for, they got it, because they know me. And the only thing I'm afraid of is that the universe is up, and guess what? I'm not afraid of it, because in a few years, I'll be the dust again and a part of it again in a greater way than I am now. I came from that universe. I will go back to that universe. I so all in me and the 400 elements in me will all evaporate back into what I used to be. So mm. stick with the life Malcolm told us is to have no fear. Stick with the life is to have no fear. Is to have no fear. The movie, the, yes, there are many women kings in Africa right now. Yes, historically, we've had multiple women kings in both East Africa, West Africa, South Africa. It had nothing to do with gender confusion or gender orientation, okay? Because everything in nature is cause and effect. Everything in the universe is based on the law of opposites, the principle of opposites, and they're not inferior or superior to one another, you know? So study mm -hmm. our history, you know, study our history. And when you study history, you're studying the best in yourself. You know? mm. When you're you study history, you're, you're studying the best in of yourself. Ashe. Yeah. Ashe. So that's all I got to say is go watch the movie, make your criticism, and then suggest a better pathway. Ashe. Don't tear down the dwelling unless you can put up a better dwelling because the people need the protection. Tell your story using ever use the theater, use the music, use the movies, use, use any method of communication you have to tell your story the best way you can based on the best information you have at the time. And when you do that, you will see your story will grow into the gigantic universal giant that that story represents. Now, Shay, so Baba, I gotta do this. Hold on. Fire! 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 Had to drop a bomb for you, Professor. So I appreciate you coming through and, and, and dropping jewels. You dropped a lot of knowledge, a lot of jewels. And, and I have Ankh. Ankh is going to come up right after you. After I'm going to play my outro family. And we're going to deal with the misogyny that exists in the black community. A lot of us, we talk about racism. We pro-black. We pan Africanness, But there's a lot of misogynists right here in these pro-black, black nationalist, pan Africanist circles. And so Brother Ankh and I are going to deal with that. But Professor, what are your closing words for the listening audience or were you finished? I didn't know if you had any closing words. Your mother is a woman. Your daughter is a woman. Your sister is a woman. The legs between which you want to desire to be if you're normal and straight is a woman. <laughs> And what would you want her to be? The greatest warrior queen in the world or some weak thing to be used for the pleasure of a weaker thing? Come on. What do you want? What do you want? I want the goddess as my wife. I want the princess as my daughter. I want the sisters of the queen as my sisters. I want the heaven itself as my mother. You know, I want to be the offspring of the greatest phenomena life has to offer, not the lesser. I say, I say. So, Baba, thank you so much for that. You're and I know that you sent me some material. You sent me some material. I want to put it up to show the people. Oh, yeah. I'll did. be in yeah, Houston you're... this weekend. Yeah, with Enbuff. And we'll be doing the caravan to the ancestors um on the 15th and then uh, me and my sister who has come in from tanzania you know and you know her because she has been involved in this movement for as long as i have maybe longer 
you know, fighting with the Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Army, and moving into Tanzania with many of our revolutionary exile and building uh, cultural and revolutionary communities in Tanzania with both Tanzanian and exiled African Americans. And we're going to be talking about Sankofa and what it means. The caravan to the ancestors that will go to Galveston is 25 years old. I was there for the starting it 25 years ago. I've been there multiple times since, and I will be there on this 25th anniversary where we pour libations to our ancestors. We come from all over the country. It's one of the largest such ancestral celebration in the country. And we wish those who could not join us by being there. Um, there's a link I think I sent you also where they yes. could not uh, um, come yes, on it did. online. And this is the and, link and right here. here. With us. Yeah. I'll drop I'll drop the link in the chat. So this is yeah. the online link family. So if you're not in, what what area is this in, Baba? It's Houston, Texas. Houston. So, so if, Texas. So if the you're not actual beach of Galveston, that's where most of the enslaved Africans was brought into Texas, and that part of the country was in Galveston Bay. So okay. we go to that bay to celebrate the ancestors. All right, family. And so if you are not in the Houston, Texas area, uh, they are live streaming this event. I just dropped the link in the chat, family. I just dropped the link in the chat. All right. So thank you so much, Professor, for thank coming you, on. And I appreciate you. For listening. I Always. appreciate you, Dr. Ma. Hey, I appreciate you. Love you much. Safe travels to you, yes, Professor, all Friday. Peace and blessings. Peace and peace and blessings. All right, family, I'm going to play my outro, and I'll be right back with the God Killer. We going in. We're going to be talking about the misogyny in the black community, so sit tight. Let's come back and fight back with maltracks. The war, the minds, they want control of the masses. And common core, they dumb us down in the classes. Without knowledge, we can't gain access. Build with the elders, take notes and write classes. We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop. Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop. We buy stocks, then we buy blocks. Cause we know the truth, and we tuned in to Dr. Mayak. Uh.